Alright, hey guys, what's going on? This is Christopher Zero, of course, and Mikey also here. Today we have another minifigure, in this case, minifigures showcase. Oh, yeah! Alright, so a few months ago, or maybe even more than that, probably more than that, uh, I showcased all of the Fantastic Beasts minifigures from the Oigo Harry Potter collectible minifigure series. Now I want to do the rest. Now there are some minifigures that are also from sets, like these guys right here, uh, him, uh, and these guys are custom. But, yes, so we have uh, looked at some of these in the past, so the ones we've looked in the past, I will go through very quickly, but the rest will uh, take some more time on it. So, all right, here we go. All right, and the first one we have here is Harry Potter from the Sorcerer's Stone, also known as the Philosopher's Stone. So, it's this one we have looked at in the past, so I'll just uh, briefly show you guys what's up. So, he's got this torso right here. This is a common torso in the minifigures. You'll see this torso a few times in this video. At least four, if not more. Probably more. Yeah, actually more. Um, so, yeah. Pretty awesome torso. You've got the tie up there, you've got the undershirt, and then you've got the uh, sweater with all of its detail there, and you've got the red and gold lines in there at the bottom. Very cool. Here's the head. You've got double-sided. This side he's scared, and this side he's not. You've got this very cool hair mold, one of my new favorites, and uh, yeah, I really like it. You also have, of course, his wand, which comes in dark brown. So there you go. That is Harry from the Sorcerer's Stone slash the Philosopher's Stone. Alright, and here is Ron Weasley. Now, I gave him this hair instead of the hair that he had, which was the Luke Skywalker hair in red. And I think this looks maybe a little more accurate. I don't think there is, like, a 100% accurate hair to his uh, hair from the uh, first two movies yet. But I think this is probably the closest we've got so far. So, alright, so here we go. So, he comes with this rat, which, of course, is Scabbers. It is different from the one you'll see in a little bit. It is in uh, a nice shade of, I believe, just dark tan. It's kind of like, uh, yeah, I guess it is dark tan. Um, it looks a little lighter than the dark tan, but yeah, I think it is. Anyways, so he's got the same torso and legs as Harry, of course. You have the uh, child legs instead of the teen legs. He's got his wand, which is in uh, normal brown. And then here's his head. Here's the other side. Very frightened, as you see. And there we go. That is Ron. All right, and here we have Hermione. Now, uh, she has, of course, the same torso as Harry and Ron. She's got this really cool new hairpiece that they've only used a few times. They've used this for Joy Spires as well as, of course, uh, Hermione. Here's her head. Of course, you've got this happy side and this worried side right there. And here's a better look at the hair. Very cool. A very uh, awesome hairpiece. Another one of my new favorites. And then you also have, of course, her wand, which is in this dark tan. So they're very, there you go. Very cool. Alright, now we are finally at some of the minifigures that I haven't showcased yet. There are a few more that I have showcased, but most of the rest of these ones I have not showcased. So it will take a little more time. Here we go. So first off, we have Harry. He comes with Hedwig right there. Pretty awesome. I believe this might be an updated version of the older version that we got, I think, back in, what was that, 2010 or so. Uh, but, yeah, still looks pretty much the same, but uh, very cool. You've got some feathers back there. You've got the tail feathers. You've got the face right there. It looks very awesome. And uh, you've got the yellow eyes with the black right there. Very cool. You've got the beak. You've got all the feathers in the front. Very cool. And here we go. So here is uh, Harry. He's got these uh, teen legs, which are smaller than the uh, normal adult legs and bigger than the kid legs. They bend, of course. They're very cool. Uh, the base fit is black, and there is some robe printing on there. Very nice. It's in dark uh, gray. And then you see more of his robes up here. He's got uh, just the black Gryffindor robes on. You've got the uh, Scarlet right there, or dark red, I guess. Looks very nice. That's for his hood, which is in the back as well. And you also have the house crest right there, the Gryffindor house crest. You've got uh, underneath he has the same uh, design as uh, the sweater right there. You see there? Very cool. I like that added detail. And then, of course, he's got black arms. And then, of course, like I said in the back, he's got this uh, hood with red right there. And you've got some more detail there in dark gray. His wand, of course, is the same as his wand in uh, the Sorcerer's Stone or the Philosopher's Stone. It is in dark brown. Then here's his head. His head is a little different than his uh, kid version. His kid version, of course, he looks uh, younger. He's got bigger glasses, actually, which is interesting. And then, here's the older version right there. See, he does look a little different. And he's got his scar up there. And on the back, uh, there's actually nothing. All right. <laughs> okay. So there we go. So and he also has this uh, surfer hair in black, which I think looks pretty darn good. Pretty good choice for his hair. And there we go. That is Harry from, I believe, The Prisoner of Azkaban. Next up we have Ron from The Prisoner of Azkaban, and he has Scabbers. This time he is different. As you see there, it's pretty much the same design, but he has this little uh, bald spot on the top of his head. And there we go. Pretty interesting. Very cool detail. And alright, here we go. 
as you see, he has the same basic legs as Harry. You know, he's got the teen legs with the um, uh, great detailing right there for the robes. And then his robes, you see, are different though. Like the house crest is covered a little bit more by the inside, which the inside of the cloak is red. And uh, you've got his shirt is uh, not tucked in. It's all a little messy and messed up. His tie too is a little messed up, which I think is a very nice detail. His shirt is even wrinkly too. You can even see his like little pocket right there. So he doesn't have his um, his sweater on. So that's really cool. I like that a lot. And of course you have his uh, black arms on the side, of course, and flesh colored hands. Same wand as he does in uh, the Philosopher's Stone or the Sorcerer's Stone. And there we go. So that is really cool. It's probably my favorite of these ones, the Gryffindor robe torsos, because I just like the way it looks. It looks awesome. And then he is sporting the new Han Solo hair, but is in this time it is in uh, this nice shade of red, or sorry, orange, I should say. And he's got this kind of smile going on there, kind of a little sly, sly Weasley smile there. And there we go, no back detailing there on the head. And there we go, that is Ron Weasley from the uh, Prisoner of Azkaban. Alright, next up we have Hermione from the Prisoner of Azkaban. So, right, her robes are even a little different too. Hers are all neat, of course, because it fits her character. So you've got some red detailing right there from the uh, outside of the robes, like the inside coming out, I guess. Instead of like on Harry and Ron where it just has the uh, dark gray. That's really cool, it looks nice. And of course you can see her sweater underneath there and her cloak is, er, uh, yeah, her cloak is even buttoned up right there. You see there's a little button detail right there and you get to see the start of her hood on the front. Of course you've got the Gryffindor house crest on the back. You'll see her hood right there. All nice and neat, so there you go. I do like the added detail right there of how each of the characters has a different version of robes. Like Harry's is pretty neat, uh, Hermione's is very neat, and then Ron's is all messy. And then of course you have her wand, same wand that she had before. Of course it is in uh, tan, looks nice. And then here is her hair. She's got this uh, hair going on here in the same color as her other hair. It is this nice uh, reddish brown, I believe. And here's her face. It's kind of like a happy face, but it's also not like super happy. So there you go. That is Hermione. Next up, we have another Harry. Oh, wait a second. There you go. That's better. You can see him a little better. All right. So he has the invisibility cloak on. So this is very cool. This is a younger version of Harry. We can uh, pull back the invisibility cloak. You see there. He's got his pajamas on, which are in white. You've got some blue detailing right there uh, with lines, which I think looks really cool. And you can see the um, invisibility cloak is one piece. Let me take it off real quick, actually. Here we go. Almost there. <laughs> and all right, here we go. So here's how the invisibility cloak works. It's just a free thing like this. It's free holes right there, free hold cape. You've got the interior, which is really cool. You've got these stars and symbols and whatnot, uh, moons on there, and then you can just put it on like this. Oh, actually, I forgot to mention. So the uh, legs are dual-moded. They're um, these child legs, but they're also dual-moded, which I think is really cool. Actually, well, I guess they're not dual-moded, but they're like uh, printed all the way around, which is interesting. It's very unique. And of course, it's got some back uh, detailing as well, just some more of the lines from the pajamas. Put it on like this. There we go, it is all shiny and very big. A room for another minifigure, I assume, at least one. And there you go, he's got a smile this time instead of the normal face, which looks like this. His normal face has got a smile, but this one is more of a grin, a larger grin. I don't think he has a any uh, double-sided head. Nope, he doesn't. Okay, so there you go, that is Invisibility Cloak Harry. Very cool. Next up is the last Harry Potter I have to show today, and that is, of course, the Tri-Wizard Tournament Harry from the uh, final task. So, Alright, here we go. It's a very nice minifigure. I love the red on this minifigure. It's very vibrant. It looks very nice. His pants, of course, are just plain black, but they're, of course, the teen legs, which is very cool. And by the way, they do have one hole, if you're wondering. They also have another, like, half little hole up there. So you can sit him down like this. And it still works, which is really cool. Very nice new feature. And alright, here is his torso. His torso is, of course, his uh, champion torso. You've got the base of it is red, and you've also got some black on the other side. It's kind of like Two-Face, a little bit. <laughs> and you also have uh, the Hogwarts crest right there, since he is representing Hogwarts. Uh, this side, he's got a red arm. This side, he's got a black arm. Of course, he's got flesh card hands. On the back, it says Potter, with uh, this kind of yellow-gold uh, detailing right there, and a star. Really cool. also have the black on this side and the red on this side. And then, here is his head. His head, I believe, does look even older than the uh, 
uh, let's see, the Prisoner of Azkaban head. Yep, he looks a little older, just a little. And um, here you go. He also has different hair too, as you see here. Now he has this hair. I believe this is uh, Lloyd Garmadon's hair from the Lego Ninjago movie. It's very nice. It is in black, of course, not in um, blonde like Lloyd is. And on the other side, he's got this sort of angered face, you know, because he's going to be fighting Voldemort. And then you also have uh, his wand, of course, the same color as it always is, this uh, dark brown. There now, I'm not sure if I mentioned this, I think I did that uh, some of these minifigures, of course, are not in the uh, collectible minifigure series. For example, uh, the three minifigures I showed at the beginning, the Ron, Harry, and Hermione, those minifigures are not in it. Uh, they are from a set. And then also, of course, the Harry from the final task is also from a set. I'll point out the ones that are from a set, and then the rest of them are from the collectible minifigure series. These are custom. They are Fred and George Weasley. They actually are sporting the... Uh, older torsos from a little bit ago from like uh, 2011 2012 so there you go i've showcased these before so we'll just take a quick peek at them so here's the older torso right there you've got the tie up there and you've got the gryffindor house crest right there on both of them on the back you do have some wrinkles as well as a continuation of the gold and red from the front they've got black legs and their faces of course are the fred and george face now on one side you have this face right here it's kind of a smiling face the side you've got kind of like a smirk, but still a smile. So there you go. So you can use both of them as uh, two different people. But of course, got this uh, orange hairstyle right here. Kind of a classic hairstyle right there. Not the classic one, but one of the classics. So there you go. And of course, they have the same color wand. They have uh, dark brown wands. And I'm not sure exactly what color their wands are. I just gave them these ones. So there we go. Next up, we have Malfoy. Now, this one is from a set. The other one we're going to showcase in a second is not uh, from a set. It's from the Collectible Minifigure series, but this one is from a set. So, first off, I did change his hair. Before, he had this sort of, uh, like, bright blonde, like the same color as the Lego Aquaman, the classic Aquaman does. But I gave him this. I thought it was more fitting and more realistic to his actual hair in the movie. So, anyways, here we go. So, he has the same basic torso as Harry, Ron, and Hermione, but it is in green and silver because of course he is part of Sliver and not part of Gryffindor which I must say looks very nice very cool and you've got the green and silver on the bottom green and silver on this side too and just some more continuation of detail right there of course he's got the child legs and then here is his head actually I should say here is his wand first he has a uh, dark brown wand so very cool and then here's his head and his hair. His hair, of course, is like the Widow Peak slick back hair, which I think looks pretty darn accurate to his movie portrayal in the uh, first two movies, at least. You've got this side, he's got kind of a scowl, and on this side, he's got a really angry face. So there you go. He's an angry guy. And that is Malfoy from the Sorcerer's Stone slash the Philosopher's Stone. Now, here is the one from the actual series. This is the Quidditch version of him. He's got the snitch, the golden snitch in his hands, and he also has this green broom right here, Nimbus 2001. And then, here is his torso and uh, his legs. His legs, of course, are just plain white. They're the child legs. Here is his torso, very detailed. I really like this new Quidditch robes uh, detail, or uh, torso, I should say. So you've got it in uh, dark green, of course, because he's representing Slytherin. You've got the sliver and crest right there, and you've got like his uh, cloak on. You also can see his undershirt right there, which is a uh, sweater. Very nice. You've got some white detailing on there as well. And then uh, some back detailing too. You've got this hood right here, and you also have some more just little details right there. Then he has this cape on. This is a cloth cape. It is a shorter cape, of course, since he is a child, so he needs a smaller cape. And then here is his head. I, I think it's a little different. Let's see. Right here, do a little comparison. It is a little different. Uh, it's a little bit of a different expression. He looks like a very, very sour expression right there. So there you go. And of course, he has the same hair as the other Malfoy. And originally, he comes with the, like I said before, the uh, bright blonde hair, the one that is used with Aquaman, that same color. But I gave him the uh, just plain old blonde hair because I thought it fit better. So there you go. That is Malfoy Quidditch uniform. Next up, we have Cho Chang with some sort of random owl. So here is her owl, I guess. It is a, uh, it's kind of, uh, I'm not sure what this is, like a kind of orangish color, orange-brown maybe. And it's very cool. Of course, got the same details as Hedwig. You've got the back feathers, the tail feathers, and you've got the side wings. And then you also have this uh, nice um, tan detailing right there for like uh, the feathers in the front. 
If you have like a lot of detail on the face, which looks really nice, you've got the yellow eyes, you've got the black surrounding the eyes as well as some tan there too. And you've got the beak right there, and you've got some more just little details right there. Very cool. And then here is Cho herself. She is uh, a teen, so she's got the teen legs right there. And then you've also got the skirt piece right there in gray that wraps all the way around. Looks nice. And then she has the same torso as Harry, Ron, Hermione, and now Malfoy, except of course it is uh, blue and silver because she is Ravenclaw. So that's really cool that they gave us all of the uh, schools, uh, schoolhouses torsos. You've got uh, Gryffindor, Slytherin, Ravenclaw, and then eventually you'll see the Hufflepuff one. So that's very cool. So of course the details continue on the back. And here is her head and her hair. Her hair is the same hair as the goth girl from uh, one of the collectible minifigure series. And it is uh, rubber instead of plastic, so you see right here, just kind of moves and bends a little bit, like this. Let me see if I can, there you go, yeah, just kind of moves and bends. And then here's her face, let me take this off real quick, so you can get a better look at that. Actually, now I can show you better that it's rubber, like this. Anyways, so she's got this kind of smile on her face, and yeah, there you go. Pretty cool. That is Cho Chang. Alright, and next up we have Cedric Diggory in his uh, final challenge. Uh, suit slash uh, clothes. So, right, so here we go. So he has this uh, Try Wizard Tournament Cup right here. See it says Try Wizard right there. It's just a plain uh, trophy with some detailing right there. You've got some silver uh, little fringe right there. Very cool. And all right here is Cedric himself. Now as you see of course he is very similar to Harry of course since they are from the same school. They have the similar robes. So as you see here he's got these gray pants on, but this time he has these uh, yellow lines right here, which is pretty cool. Some added detail right there. You also have, of course, his torso, which is kind of like two-faced once again. You've got the yellow and then you've got the black. You've got the Hog Hogwarts crust right there. Then on the back you have this red star. You've got, it says Diggory, and that's a red star. Of course, black and yellow. Yellow on this side, black on this side, flesh card hands, and he's got this uh, just normal... Um, Brown wand matches his hair actually. That's cool. <laughs> Always accessorize. And here we go. Here's his face. And get a little closer look there. He's got this smile right there. And he's got some uh, eyebrows, which are a little darker than his hair. A little uh, dark brown eyebrows. And here's his hairpiece. Really like this hair. It's very cool. It is the uh, same hairpiece they used for Lego Batman from the Lego Batman movie. It is in, of course, brown. And man, looks so awesome. And there you go. That is Cedric. And I also do have this custom Cedric right there. I just painted uh, Hermione's robes with yellow and black detailing right there. So, yeah, I've already showcased this, but I figured I'd just put him in here. Next up, we have Dean Thomas with a Hogwarts flag, or sorry, not a Hogwarts flag, a Gryffindor flag for, I believe, just like a Quidditch match so you can, like, go, hey, yeah, go Gryffindor. Anyways, so here we go. His torso is very similar, of course, to that of Hermione and Ron and Harry, except for it's more like Hermione since it is buttoned up, except for it has this nice scarf right there. You see it is a red scarf with yellow lines right there, of course, to represent Gryffindor. Very cool. He has this dark brown uh, wand, and the scarf does continue on the back. Very nice. And here is his head. Kind of flew this through this one since it's pretty similar to the rest of them. So, of course, he's got this uh, very nice smile, and you've got this hair right here, which is pretty awesome. It is in brown. It's the same hair they use for Finn, except for now it is in dark brown instead of black. So there you go. That is Dean Thomas. Next up we have Neville Longbottom. Now he comes with this pot right here, which is in this nice shade of uh, dark, uh, well, I guess, yeah, orange, like a brown orange color. It's very cool. Of course he has his little plants right here. Now if you can name this plant, uh, go ahead and do it in the comment section below. A little trivia right there. I won't say what it is, but I'll tell you if you're right or wrong. So there you go. Pretty cool. It's like this little acorn thingy with a face on it, and then you also have this green part right here. It just goes into the uh, little jar right there. Okay. So, uh, Neville is also has a unique torso right there. He's got the black teen legs, of course, no printing on them. And you also have this uh, greenhouse torso. You can see he has his Hogwarts robes on underneath there. You can see his little uh, Gryffindor tie as well as his undershirt right there in white. But he has these uh, tan uh, robes on, so right here just to cover over his uh, his normal robes and shirts so they don't get all messy from dealing with the greenhouse stuff. You've got a little pocket right there, you've got some detailing right there in dark tan, and of course the whole thing is in white tan. On the back of course you've got some more detailing, some little wrinkles and stuff, and the uh, continuation of his collar back there. His arms of course are white tan, same with his torso, and then he also has these brown gloves to uh, protect his hands, and of course he has this dark brown wand. 
And lastly, here is his head. Oh, <laughs> here is his head. He's got kind of a worried expression right there, since he always seems to be a little worried. And he also has the um, headphones on to protect his ears, or earmuffs, I should say, to protect his ears from the scream of the plant, which I will not name. And you also have uh, his hair right there, kind of swoops to the side. So yeah, very cool. That's Neville. Here is another minifigure from a set that is Susan Bones. Now, uh, she is pretty similar to all of the other minifigures with the Hogwarts uh, sweater on, except for the fact that now she has this uh, Hufflepuff sweater, which I said we'd get to in a little bit. And here it is finally. So, of course, you have black and yellow instead of uh, silver and blue or silver and green or red and gold. So that is pretty cool. It's the same torso, just with different printing, different colors right there. So that is really nice. And you know, also, she has the Cho Chang hair, which is rubbery, but instead it is in this nice shade of orange, which looks really nice, really stands out. And so then here's her face. This side, she is happy, and on this side, she's kind of sad. So there you go, and she also has this black wand. Like I said before, this is a minifigure from the set, it's not from the actual series. So there you go, that is Susan Bones, a pretty cool minifigure. And here is the last student we have here, and that is, of course, Luna Lovegood. Now she comes with a quibbler, a magazine that her father prints, you know, Felius Lovegood. And there you go, you can see it there, she's got these, all right, this guy's got these glasses on. He's got a beard there, and yeah, pretty cool. Nice detail to add there. And then here is the mini actual minifigure herself. Now, all right, so the legs you see here, she's got these blue teen legs, of course, you can see there. They bend, they don't have any other detailing on there, because of course the skirt is covering them. So, for her skirt, it is black, of course. You've got these circle details right there, as well as a heart, you've got a unicorn. And just in a variety of colors, you've got green, uh, yellow, blue and some pink in there as well as some whites so yeah very cool I saw some stars there too so yes I want a detail right there and then here is her torso which I'll remove her hair so you can get a better look at the back it is in a vibrant pink she's got her pink robes on and there you go we've got some buttons right there as well as some little uh, sewing pieces right there so it's sewn on together uh, nothing on the back she of course has uh, these uh, the same color as her shirt the uh, pink arms, and of course she has flesh colored hands, and then a brown wand. She also has this bag right here, a satchel in a nice shade of purple. Very unique. Then here is her head and hair. Her hair is also a new hair piece. It goes like this. It gives you enough room for a satchel so she can wear her hair and have her satchel too. This is in a very vibrant shade of blonde. Uh, the same blonde as the uh, original hair from Alpha. I guess it is a little different than um, Aquaman, maybe a little bit, I don't know. Anyways, this side she's got kind of a neutral expression, and this side she's got her glasses on. The same glasses from the Quibbler issue. So there you go. And yes, a very cool minifigure, very unique minifigure in this series. Wuna Lovegood. Before we get into Dumbledore and the teachers, we have Dobby, the house elf. This is the version from him, uh, for, of his, in the collectible minifigure series. He has uh, Tom Riddle's diary, which has already been stabbed by the Basilisk Fang. And it opens like this. You can see his sock right there to give him freedom. A hairy sock right there. So yeah, very cool detail right there. You can just flip it open like that. And yeah, he holds on to this part right there. You see there? And yeah, pretty awesome. And here is this minifigure himself. He has dual molded legs, which is really cool. So, as you see there, he's got these uh, flesh for his feet right there. And you also have the starting of his little like, sack that he wears. That is in a shade of uh, tan. So there you go, and his uh, sack continues on up here, you've got a little, uh, it's a little messy, you've got some wrinkles all over, and it's a little uh, yeah, untidy, and it's tied together like that. And on the back there's some more details right there to show that it's really messy and dirty. Of course he has flesh colored arms and hands on both sides. And then here is his head, a very unique and new piece right here. Uh, it is plastic, I believe, or actually it might be rubber. Yeah, okay, it is rubber. Yeah, so you have his eyes right there, which are in this kind of like yellowish green and you also have his eyebrows right there he's got a smile on his face he's always, always seems to be a pretty happy guy for the most part he's got this uh, nose right there looks really cool kind of like bends out like that he's got his ears and here's the back back looks pretty darn accurate I must say and yeah so this is a pretty cool version of Dobby so there you go I do prefer the uh, older version of Dobby but this version of Dobby is still very nice too so there you go that is Dobby and I've also showcased this minifigure in the past, but this is the Dumbledore from the Hogwarts set. This is, of course, the original Dumbledore from the first two movies. And yes, a very cool minifigure. I do have a showcase on that, but I'll just show you guys briefly what he looks like. And there we go. 
Next up we have Dumbledore from 3 through 7. So here we go, this is a very nice minifigure I must say. He comes with this pensieve right here, which is a silver plates dish or bowl dish piece thing with um, this kind of swirling going on here for the water. So yeah, pretty awesome. Very accurate piece right there. It was a nice addition too. So he has this uh, tan wand right here. And let's remove his head and beard so you can get a better look at his torso, but his head and beard are very cool too. We'll take a look at that in a second. It's coming, there we go. All right, so his torso, of course, is in this very nice shade of blue. It's kind of like a sky blue, I guess, but like a little, uh, a little different than sky blue, I guess, like a baby blue, I guess, maybe that might be the word I'm looking for. But he has these robes on, these very fancy robes. You've got some silver on there and some white detailing right there, just some really cool patterns. He has the skirt piece, which I think was a great addition to his minifigure. And here's his torso, of course, to continue with the robes right there. He's got this really just fancy uh, dress thingy on. Fancy robes, I should say, not dress. <laughs> uh, he's got some buttons right there. He's got some gold there, too. Very nice. And there's no printing on the back, because usually his hair covers up his back. Of course, you've got uh, the same color uh, arms as the torso, and you've got flesh cord hands. So there you go. Here is the head without the beard. As you see there, it's a pretty cool head. This could be uh, come in handy, you know? Could work for like a, some sort of minifigure there. And then, here is his beard. His beard is like this. It goes down like this and it comes together. It's uh, tied like that, just like in the movie. Put on his head, so you can get a better look at that, what it looks like with that combined. And then, lastly, of course, he has his hair. His hair is, uh, I guess, dual molded too. You've got his hat right there with a little uh, tassel in gold, which looks amazing. And then his hair itself looks really good too. All together, it makes for a very awesome Dumbledore minifigure. And here we have McGonagall. Now, this minifigure was not in the series, but I decided to add it to it anyways. So here we go. So I'm kind of surprised that they didn't give her a uh, skirt piece, but that's okay. The legs work too. So. As you see, your legs are in a dark shade of green. This is kind of a little bit of a rarer color for Lego. You don't see this color all that often. And you've got like just uh, these really cool robe detailing right there. You've got like some blue circle looking things and like some leaf looking stuff. And yeah, it looks very cool. No uh, detailing on the back, of course, of the legs. And then continuing on with the theme of her uh, robes right there. Let me get a little better white in there so you can see it better. There you've got some, it's in white green. You also have, of course, the dark green of her robes, and the dark green is the base of this torso. And you also have uh, her, like, black undershirt on underneath there, but it also has a little bit of green detailing there, giving it, like, a uh, sort of uh, dark green look to it, which I think is really, really cool. It's even darker than this green. It's, like, almost black, basically. Well, it is kind of black, but, you know. She also has this little uh, pendant right there, or a necklace thing um, in silver. So that's pretty cool. Also has, like, some little gold dots there. Her arms, of course, match her torso, and then on the back, she has even more detailing there. You can see it better. It's not all cut off by the opening of her robes. You can see more. You've got the circle with just some fanciness going on there, and some more of these little plant-looking details, leaves and stuff. And she has this black wand. And then her head, see there? Pretty accurate portrayal of uh, herself from the movie. She's got the smile. On the back, she is kind of in this frown. So there you are. Of course, she has this classic witch hat in black. So there you go. That is McGonagall. Here we have the new version of Hagrid, which I can't remember if I've showcased in the past. I don't think I have, but uh, just in case, I might go for this one a little quickly. So here's how he works. So you have these short legs that you combine under there. They're in dark brown. And there you go. This is all one piece right here, this big torso. You can remove the arms, I think, but for uh, the rest of it, it's all in one piece. Of course, you've got these normal hands. In the original one, you actually had these different hands, like with knuckles on them, which I thought was interesting. But now they just have the uh, normal flesh-colored hands. He's got this very cool umbrella piece, which is a very accurate umbrella, I must say. It's a very, very cool piece. He also has this lantern here, which is, comes in two parts. You have this uh, steel part there, which is in this nice dark, uh, dark metal color, dark silver. And then you also have this white piece right there, which you uh, pop in. And there you go. And his torso, of course, is in this nice shade of uh, kind of like a red-orange a little bit. Or not red-orange, I guess, like tan. Tan, but also like closer to orange, too. Like tan orange, I guess. There you go. You have some buttons on the side, and then you also have another shirt on underneath there, which is in uh, this darker brown. Or I guess just brown, I should say. He's got this black belt on, and he has a red undershirt underneath that. So there you go. 
Here's his face without the beard. Uh, you've got this kind of smile right there. He looks very happy. And there's no other face there. So there you go. Here's his beard. Very cool and new beard piece. It's all molded together. You've got the hair, his very long hair. And then you've got his beard. All in a nice shade of dark uh, brown. There you go. And I always say nice a lot. Sorry. <laughs> Anyways, there you go. That is the new Hagrid. This also is not in the minifigure series. Now I do not have the new Snape, but this is my personal favorite Snape. I think this one honestly looks a little better than the new one, but the new one still looks pretty good too. So, he's got black pants on. He's a very dark minifigure. Most of the color on his minifigure is black, or either dark gray, or a little flush of course. But other than that, so he's got uh, his robes on underneath there. He's got, or on the top, on his torso. He's got uh, the robes, and you also have his black undershirt underneath there, black vest or whatever he's wearing. It's all buttons up with these dark gray buttons, and then you've got some dark gray detailing to show that it's uh, indeed a different piece, it's not all at one and the same. And then you also have uh, no detailing on the back, apparently, so there you go. Uh, black arms, uh, flesh colored hands, he's got this black wand, of course, he's very just all black, like I said. And then here's the head. Uh, this head looks very nice, I really like it a lot, I think it's an accurate portrayal of the character. There is no double head, he basically just has the same expression throughout the whole movie, he's just kind of like, kind of angry and stuff. So there you go. And yeah, that is Snape. He's got uh, this hair as well. This uh, Kylo Ren hair. So there we go. Snape. Now we are getting into the Defense Against the Dark Arts teachers. First up, we have the first one from the movie. That is Professor uh, Quirrell. So this is also from a set. It is not in the Collectible Minifigure series. I figured I'd add him anyways. We've got a few more that aren't from the Collectible Minifigure series. But also we do have a few that are from the Collectible Minifigure series coming up. Anyways, so as you see here. His legs are just plain black, nothing special going on there. His torso is pretty simple, but it really gets the job done. He is wearing a suit, he's got a blue tie up there, and you also have uh, the whites of his undershirt, and then you just, yeah, just a plain old suit. And then the continuation of his, like, uh, scarf there, he's got a scarf on, and uh, it is in this uh, kind of lilac -y color, so there you go. Nothing on the back, I guess it is probably from his turban, maybe, yeah, the uh, continuation of his turban. Of course he has black hands, or sorry not black hands, black arms and flesh colored hands. He's got some detailing on the back, you know, just some standard detailing there for the back of his suits. He's got this brown wand. And here is one of the uh, one of my favorite parts of this minifigure, besides the entire minifigure itself, because so I'm really glad they finally remade Quirrell. So, here's his head, he's got this kind of little confused look about him. He's got this new uh, newer, I guess, I'm not sure when this is from, but this newer turban piece. Which is in, of course, the same shade of lilac, which is really nice. I really like this piece. On the back, of course, you have Voldemort himself. It's very creepy, too, of course. It's supposed to be very creepy. So there you go. That is Quirrell, a very awesome minifigure, I must say. Sadly, there is no new version of Lockhart yet. I'd love to see that, though. But for now, we do have this new version of Lupin, which I really like, too. Especially the hair. I think the hair is a really nice touch. The perfect hair for him. And all right, so he has just pray, pray, plain dark tan legs. There we go. Pretty cool. Gets the job done. And really matches with his torso too. I think it really just blends well. You've got these nice kind of olive green right there for the vest underneath there. It's all a little tattered, just like in the movie. He's got a button missing right there with the uh, representation of the X. Then you also have his uh, shirt too, which is also in, in disrepair too. You've got some like little, little cut right there in the collar. And you also have his uh, tie, which looks a little, little dirty. Also have his uh, actual uh, suit jacket, so you've got like some little tear tears right there, kind of in a lightning bolt shape too, interesting. And uh, it is in dark gray. The base of the uh, torso is dark gray, of course. You also have these uh, back detailing right there, pretty standard uh, back detailing, but still looks nice. It's got little wrinkles there too, little added wrinkles there, more than usual I'd say. Then you also have these uh, dark gray arms, you've got flesh guard hands, and you've got of course his wand, which is once again in uh, brown. Same color as his hair too, so here you go. Here is his actual head, he's got some scars right there, of course he was attacked by a werewolf when he was younger. He's got uh, stubble right there, as well as a goatee and mustache. Uh, the same color as his eyebrows, and he's got a kind of a happy smile, you know, kind of a little crooked but happy smile. On this side, uh, not so much. He just looks like he's about to transform into the werewolf that he is. He's got some uh, yellow eyes there, and he's got just like a very uh, angry expression. Then he has this uh, swooped to the side hair, the same hair that was used for the uh, Lego Barista from the Lego movie. And except this is in a shade of, uh, <clears throat> sorry, this is in a shade 
of uh, brown. Instead of just like the dark brown, it's just a normal brown. There we go. The last of the Defense Against the Dark Arts Citra, and I guess Snape was also one of them too, so I didn't. I actually went out of order, but that's alright. I consider Snape more of the Potion Citra since he wasn't the Dark Arts Citra for that long. But, anyways, so we have. Well, I guess none of these guys were there for that long either, but, anyways. Um, so we have Mad Eye Moody. So here we go, he's got his flask of Polyjuice Potion. It's got this. It's this uh, little uh, maraca um, shaker. Uh, piece, but this part is in brown and this part is in gold, which I must say looks very nice. I guess it is dual molded as well, so very cool. It also has this little walking stick staff thing that he also can use as a wand. And I think he also comes with a wand too. I'm not sure, I don't remember, but anyways, so here is his torso and legs and just hold the rest of the minifigure, I should say. So his legs are uh, dual molded too, I forgot about that. So the base of them are blue, and then you also have his metal uh, walking leg there. Of course, he's missing one leg, so he has a metal uh, leg as a replacement, a robotic leg. And you also have the start of his trench coat, which is in a nice shade of dark uh, tan, dual molded. And you've got some buttons going up the top to the top. Then he also has this uh, really interesting jacket thingy on, which has like a lot of uh, belts and stuff, and a zipper in dark tan, or not dark tan, dark gray. And you've got just a continuation of his trench coat with the little flips and the wrinkles. And on the back he's got some more wrinkles on the back. <laughs> on the back he has more wrinkles on the back, yes of course. And then he also has this uh, part of his collar up there. And his arms match his trench coat, flush cord hands, and here's his head. And his hair, this is a new hair piece, I think this is exclusive to uh, Mad Eye right now, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but I think this is the only minifigure that uses this right now. That is a nice uh, blonde color. And it's very wavy. And this is what it looks like on his head. Then he has, of course, his eye right there. And he's got a grimace there. He's not a very happy person. He's got the scar right there uh, in this shade of uh, dark um, flesh color, I guess. Dark, um, I don't know, dark peach, maybe. <laughs> um, in the back, of course, we've got. Barty Crouch Jr. Yes, he is Barty Crouch Jr. If you didn't know the uh, <laughs> the twist there in the movie, or slash book, then spoiler. Uh, sorry, but um, he has uh, these eyebrows right here. Very, <laughs> very um, interesting eyebrows, really angled up. And he's got this tongue, this classic little tick that he has. So he sticks out his tongue in the movie. And he's got um, stubble right there. So there you go. Very cool, very cool. And that is, of course, Mad-Eye Moody. Next up we have Professor Flitwick. Now if you've made it through this video so far, thank you very much for watching and uh, I appreciate you uh, putting in the effort for watching this video, it's probably pretty long. And if you're just skimming around, that's cool too, you know, I'm alright if that's. So anyways, here we go. So Flitwick, he has this megaphone of course since he is the music teacher as well as the charms teacher. Very cool piece. And it is in silver and you can see in there too. So there you go, that's cool. Alright, so he has this uh, just brown wand right there, and he has uh, black uh, little uh, child legs right there, or just uh, short person legs. And he also has these coattails too, which I must say are very cool and cool addition to his minifigure. Just a little added extra detail. Since he's such a very well dressed person, he's got this black suit on, and he also has a gray vest underneath that, and a white uh, fancy shirt underneath there. He has this bow tie too, which I must say is very nice. He has this new hair, which is also used for Ned in uh, Far From Home, which I must say is a great choice. This hair is in dark brown, and it is kind of uh, pushed to the side, a little combed, uh, very well combed. And uh, here's his face. He's got this very nice mustache there. He's got some great eyebrows too, and the uh, circle glasses, and then a smile, a very big smile. I don't think he has a double-sided face. No, he doesn't. So there you go, Professor Flitwick, a very accurate uh, Professor Flitwick, I might add. And here we have Professor Tarani. So, she is also a, uh, a very awesome, and like there's a lot of detail in her uh, minifigure. So, she comes with this cup and plate. Of course, she is using these to uh, predict the future. We've got a very flowery cup there, and then, or sorry, plates, and then the cup here is just plain. So, very cool. I like this detail. It's very nice, uh, very well molded. It's very cool. So, here is her torso and uh, her legs. She has the skirts on. One of the few minifigures in the series to have a skirt. I think there are only three. It is in this olive green. She's got a lot of uh, different detail right there. You've got like branches on her skirts, and then you also have like some frilly stuff right there, and you also have some dark green with these like 
circle thingies, spirally circle things, and you've got some uh, dark yellow right there, really nice. And here is her torso, and our torso of course is the same color as her skirt, and it continues on with the detail from the skirt, with these branches looping around, she's got all these charms on, her neck, her necklaces, and then she's got like a little collar up there with some strings, so there you go. Nothing on the back of course, because her hair usually walks up, or her hair does walk up the uh, most of that, most of her back. We also have this dark brown wand, and then here's her head and hair. Her head, as you see here, she's got these really big glasses on that really make her eyes a little bigger too. She's got this kind of interesting smile on her face, and she's got this really puffy hair, and with this uh, bandana going around with some uh, green as well as some orange and red. Very nice. And here's her hair. It's a very unique hair piece, I must say. I've never seen this hair piece uh, with any other minifigure. They really went above and beyond with this uh, wave of uh, minifigures. There's just a lot of new details and a lot of new... Uh, pieces. So there you go. Now that was the end of the uh, Hogwarts professors. Now we have a Hogwarts ghost that is of course Sir Nicholas. I think this is the first minifigure we've gotten of him, if I'm not mistaken. This is not from the uh, series. This is just uh, from one of the sets. and It is a very cool minifigure. So you've got his legs right there. They are printed. Um, they are in dark gray and they have some uh, detailing right there. I'm not sure why I just hold it, held it up like that. But uh, you have some uh, white and dark gray. Of course, he is a ghost, so he doesn't have a lot of vibrant colors. Usually, just dark and white gray. Various shades of gray, which I must say look pretty darn cool. So you've got like some silveriness right there, and just yeah, there's a lot of detail packed in this guy. You've got some lines right there. You've got this uh, fancy frilly stuff that he's got wearing, uh, that he's wearing, and silver as well as just uh, white gray and a little dark gray there too, and as well as some black too, just to really define it. Some more of that's on the back there, just really nice and shiny too. You've got some uh, white gray hands, or white gray arms, why do I keep on saying that, and white hands. And then his head, he's got this uh, nice smile. Even though he's dead and nearly headless, he is still a happy guy. But on this side though, he is sad. Uh, he's got this really nice mustache and goatee combo right there, and he, yeah, really cool. He also has this uh, hair too, which has been used for a few minifigures, like Doc Brown. And uh, yeah, it's like... It's kind of like that one hairpiece, uh, the Mr. Incredible hairpiece, just with more on the back, which is cool. And of course it is in gray, because he has a ghost. So there you go, that is Sir Nick. We're almost done, we're at the bad guys, the villains. So this one is from the collectible minifigure series, this one is from a set. This one he has on green robes is of course Voldemort. Uh, he's got some nice detailing on there, he's got some black lines, just to add some little more detail right there. Nothing on the back, but he's got this uh, green skirt. So he does, or I guess I should say emerald, or sort of like a dark green instead of, uh, you know, just plain green. It's a uh, different shade of green. He's got a white wand there, of course. There you go. Just like in the movie. And then on this face, he's kind of, uh, kind of, I guess, mad, you know? He's kind of trying to be intimidating. He's got that intimidating face. He's got some yellow right there by his eyes. Just to add some little more detail right there. Of course, he doesn't have a nose. And then he's got, yeah, just some... Nice detail in there. Very good minifigure, very good version of Voldemort. And then here we have a very happy version of Voldemort. He's like an evil smile there. And you've got some more detailing right there with the eyes and the, uh, the no-nose. You've got like some teeth there now, so just the, uh, just the grimace or kind of frown sort of deal there. And then his torso is a little different. Of course it is in black instead of green. Uh, there's no detail on these skirts. But there is detail on the actual torso itself, in green too, which I must say is a very good touch. And you've got some a little bit of skin showing there. And uh, yeah, he has, actually does have some back detailing on this one. He's got some uh, more green lines there. And yeah, so pretty cool. I like these both uh, equally, I think. So there you go. Those are the two Voldemorts. This one is from the set. This one's from the series, of course. Since we have yet to get a Lucius Malfoy minifigure, I decided to uh, make my own. This is uh, two different versions. There have been two different versions that have been made, and I kind of combined them. We've got the uh, old head and the newer torso. So his legs are in black, uh, nothing special going on there. But he does have this uh, torso on, which has like some fur lining right there. He's a very fancy person. He's very rich too. He's got um, this sort of thing to keep it all together. It's also with, uh, you can see it's a snake there. Because he was Slytherin, and he still supports Slytherin. He's got kind of a snake scale uh, shirt on there too, with a white collar and this little um, pennant right there. Very cool. I'm not sure if there's anything on the back, let's see. Uh, nope, nothing on the back since he wears this cape. He's got this black cape on, it is a nice crisp one, not the uh, new one, it's a canvas one. I believe canvas or whatever it's made out of. 
Then you have this black wand, of course. He's a very dark person, so naturally we'd have a black wand. And then here is the head and hair. The head, of course, like I said before, is an older version from, I believe, the Graveyard Duel. He's got a sort of grimace right there. His eyebrows look, make him look very, very mad. And then he has on this hair right here, a very long blonde hair. So there you go. It's a pretty old piece. And then on the back, he has his Death Eater mask on. So he looks very menacing in that. And he also comes with a hood, I believe, in the uh, actual uh, official minifigure. So there you go. That is Lucius Malfoy, a my own custom version, of course. Here we have Wormtail. Now, the original Wormtail minifigure was pretty good, but this one is definitely a lot more accurate and has a lot of detail packed into it. This is also a minifigure from a set. So here we go. So, his pants are just like absolutely crazy. They're kind of like carnival pants you've got on yellow and brown and black as the base. And then you've got his start of his suit there, which is really raggedy, raggedy and just uh, messed up. Worn, uh, worn a lot because he is in hiding a little bit. So you've got some more of this uh, brown and yellow and just black. You also have this uh, shirt on that he has there. It just looks like he has like a lot of scratches, but it's actually just like the design, I guess. So it's uh, in uh, brown. And uh, yeah, I guess it's like, I'm not sure if it is like the actual shirt pattern or it's like, uh, uh, just like, uh, just worn down, you know. Of course, like the minifigure is fine, obviously, it's just, I mean, like the actual pattern, like if it's meant to represent like the actual like pattern of his shirt or like his uh, shirt is worn down. But anyways, I think it is just a pattern since it really is, uh, looks like a pattern. Uh, but yes, he's got a very interesting uh, jacket on and that, of course, continues in the back. Like I said before, uh, it's very uh, raggedy and uh, worn. So there you go. And the uh, ma the pieces he comes with, he has this uh, brown wand and this uh, knife there. Then his head, he's a very angry expression. I also forgot to mention, he does have his silver hand there. He cuts off his hand and puts it in the cauldron as a sacrifice to Voldemort, and then Voldemort gives him his hand back. In silver, of course. And then, uh, you've got, like, he's got very thick eyebrows and just kind of like a nasty expression. He's like, he's a very evil guy. On this side, he's got a little bit of a worried expression there, since he's also a very scared, scaredy cat guy. Um, then he also has this hair, same hair as Obi-Wan from Episode 2. So there you go. Very nice. Last but not least, we have this Death Eater guy, who is also from a set. Now, he has just a plain uh, skirt piece, wax skirt piece on. His torso has uh, some robe detailing right there, just some standard uh, Death Eater stuff, I guess. <laughs> so he has like some uh, gray right there, some uh, silver, this little silver thing right there, and he's got another silver pendant right there. You also have the, uh, the buttons on his suit right there, in a nice shade of gray. On the back he has this hood, even though he already has a hood on, but I guess he has like another hood. I guess this is a hat, not a hood, so he has a hood, and then the continuation of his, uh, his robes. He has black hands and black arms and a black wand. He's a very dark character as well. And here is the head and hats. This is, of course, in a very new headpiece and a hat piece. This is uh, printed onto a black head. You've got the bone mask, and you've got, you can see their head underneath there, but it's dark. It's in uh, dark gray, which I think is really cool. You can kind of see his mouth right there, but then you've got his eyes. And here's his hat. It's a very pointy hat which is cool. I think it is a pretty new piece. I'm not sure when it was made. I think there's a gnome that has this piece, or that might be different as well. I don't know, but anyways, that is it, guys. Alright, and thank you guys for watching. I enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye!